everyone. Thank you so much for joining us again for our book reading program. We are continuing with the third chapter of our book, Prayer by Ellen G. White. And the title of the chapter this week is God Hears Prayers. I am hoping you will join me to the end as we get to learn more about God and prayers through the pen of inspiration by our sister Ellen White. And as we begin, let us bow down for a word of prayer. Lord, we pray that this day you may teach us more about you. Open up our minds so that we may be able to comprehend what we learn. And we pray that you may forgive us our sins and draw us closer to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <music> God hears prayer. God hears the prayer of the humble. Our Heavenly Father waits to bestow upon us the faith, the fullness of His blessing. It is our privilege to drink largely at the fountain of boundless love. What a wonder it is that we pray so little. God is ready and willing to hear the sincere prayer of the humblest of His children, and yet, there is much manifest reluctance on our part to make known our wants to God. What can the angels of heaven think of poor hopeless human beings who are subject to temptation when God's heart of infinite love yearns toward them, ready to give them more than they can ask or think, and yet they pray so little and have so little faith? The angels love to bow before God. They love to be near Him. They regard communion with God as their highest joy, and yet the children of earth, who need so much the help that God only can give, seem satisfied to walk without the light of His Spirit, the companionship of His presence. Those who have a humble, trusting, contrite heart, God accepts and hears their prayer, and when God helps, all obstacles will be overcome. How many men of great natural abilities and high scholarships have failed when placed in positions of responsibility, while those of feebler intellect with less favorable surroundings have been wonderfully successful? The secret was the former trusted to themselves, while the latter united with him who is wonderful in counsel and mighty in working to accomplish what he will. God hears and answers prayer. God hears prayer. Christ has said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Again, he says, if any man serve me, he will my father honor. John 14, 14 and John 12, 26. If we live according to his word, every precious promise he has given will be fulfilled to us. We are undeserving of his mercy, but as we give ourselves to him, he receives us. He will work for and through those who follow him. The Lord will certainly hear and answer the prayers of his workers if they will seek him for counsel and construction and instruction. God hears the prayers of all who seek him in truth. He has the power that we all need. He fills the heart with love and joy and peace and holiness. I saw that every prayer which is sent up in faith from an honest heart will be heard of God and answered. And the one that sent up the petition will have the blessing when he needs it most, and it will often exceed his expectations. Not a prayer of a true saint is lost if sent up in faith from an honest heart. God listens to every prayer. The infinite God, said Jesus, makes it your privilege to approach him by the name of Father. Understand all that this implies. No earthly parent ever pleaded so earnestly with an erring child as he who made you pleads with a transgressor. No man loving interest ever followed the impenitent with such tender invitations. 
God dwells in every abode. He hears every word that is spoken, listens to every prayer that is offered, tastes the sorrows and disappointments of every soul, regards the treatment given to the father, mother, sister, friend, and neighbor. He cares for our necessities, and His love and mercy and grace are continually flowing to satisfy our need. God hears every sincere prayer. The Bible shows us God in His high and holy place, not in a state of inactivity, not in silence and solitude, but surrounded by ten thousands times ten thousand and thousands of thousands of holy intelligences, all waiting to do His will. Through channels which we cannot discern, He is in active communication with every part of His dominion. But it is in this peck of a world in the soul that he gave his only begotten son to save, that his interest and the interest of all heaven is centered. God is bending from his throne to hear the cry of the oppressed. To every sincere prayer he answers, here I am. He uplifts the distressed and, dis and downtrodden. In all our afflictions, he is afflicted. In every temptation and every trial, the angel of his presence is near to deliver. As yet, the disciples were acquainted with the Savior's unlimited resources and power. He said to them, Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. John 16:24. He explained that the secret of their success would be in asking for strength and grace in his name. He would be present before the Father to make request for them. The prayer of the humble suppliant he presents as his own desire in that soul's behalf. Every sincere prayer is heard in heaven. It may not be fluently expressed, but if the heart is in it, it will ascend to the sanctuary where Jesus ministers, and he will present it to the Father without one awkward stammering word, beautiful and fragrant with the incense of his own perfection. The path of sincerity and integrity is not a path free from obstruction, but in every difficulty we are to see a call to prayer. There is no one living who has any power that he has not received from God, and the source whence it comes is open to the weakest human being. Whatsoever ye ask in my name, said Jesus, that will I do, and the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. In my name, Christ bid his disciples to pray. In Christ's name, his followers are to stand before God through the value of the sacrifice made for them. They are to value in the, God's, in the Lord's sight. Because of the imputed righteousness of Christ, they are accounted precious. For Christ's sake, the Lord pardons those that fear him. He does not see in them the vileness of the sinner. He recognizes in them the likeness of his son in whom they believe no sincere prayer is lost make your requests known to the maker never is one repulsed who comes to him with a contrite heart not one sincere prayer is lost amid the anthems of the celestial choir god hears the cries of the weakest human being we pour out our heart's desire in our closets. We breathe a prayer as we walk by the way, and our words reach the throne of the monarch of the universe. They may be inaudible in any human ear, but they cannot die away into silence, nor can they be lost through the activities of business that they are going on. Nothing can drown the soul's desire. It rises above the din of the street, above the confusion of the multitude, to the heavenly courts. It is God whom, to whom we are speaking and, to our, and our prayer is heard. You know, you who feel the most unworthy, fear not to commit your case to God. God hears Jesus' intercession mingled with our prayers. Christ has pledged himself to be our substitute and surety. 
and he neglects no one. There is an, an, an inexhaustible fund of perfect obedience occurring from his obedience. In heaven, his merits, his self-denial, his self-sacrifice are treasured as incense to be offered up with the prayers of his people. As the sinner's sincere, humble prayers are sent to the throne of God, Christ mingles with them the merits of his own life of perfect obedience. Our prayers are made fragrant by this incense. Christ has pledged himself to intercede in our behalf, and the Father always hears his Son. God always responds, though we may not realize it. If we come to God feeling helpless and dependent as we really are and in humble trusting faith make known our wants to him whose knowledge is infinite, who sees everything in creation and who governs everything by his will and word, he can and will attend to our cry and will let light shine into our hearts. Through sincere prayer, we are brought into connection with the mind of the infinite. We may have no remarkable evidence at the time that the face of our Redeemer is bending over us in compassion and love, but this is even so. We may not feel his visible touch, but his hand is upon us in love and pitying tenderness. God's answers are not always what we expect. Ask then, ask and ye shall receive. Ask for humility, wisdom, courage, increase of faith. To every sincere prayer an answer will come. It may not come just as you desire or at the time you look for it, but it will come in the way and at the time that will best meet your need. The prayers you offer in loneliness, in weariness, in trial, God answers not always according to your expectations, but always for your good. God hears prayers for the conversion of souls. When those who know the truth practice self-denial and joined in God's word, the message will go in will go with power. The Lord will hear our prayers for the conversion of souls. God's people will let their light shine forth and unbelievers seeing their good works will glorify our Heavenly Father. Believe that God hears your prayers. The people of God must move understandingly. They should not be satisfied until, they, until every known sin is confessed then it is their privilege and duty to believe that Jesus accepts them. They must not wait for others to press through the darkness and obtain the victory for them to enjoy. Such enjoyment will last only till the meeting closes. But God must be served from principle instead of from feeling. Morning and night obtain the victory for yourself in your own family. Let not your daily labor keep you from this. Take time to pray and as you pray, believe that God hears you and have faith mixed with your prayers. You may, you may not at all times feel the immediate answer, but then it is that faith is tried. You are proved to see whether you will trust in God, whether you have living abiding faith. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Walk the narrow plank of faith. Trust all, all on the promises of the Lord. Trust God in darkness. That is the time to have faith. But you often let feeling govern you. You look for worthiness in yourself when you do not feel comforted by the Spirit of God and despair because you cannot find it. You do not trust enough in Jesus, precious Jesus. You do not make his worthiness to be all, all. The very best you can do will not merit the favor of God. It is Jesus' worthiness that will save you, his blood that will cleanse you. But you have efforts to make. You must do what you can on your part. Be zealous and repent, then believe. Thank you so much for staying with us to the end of this chapter. It's been a short one, but very, very deep. Um, I have learned that for, 
for all the prayers that are offered God actually hears them sometimes he might not answer according to the conventional ways that we think he should or according to what we asked but he knows best he created us and definitely he has the manual for our lives and so all we need to do is believe and trust that every other time we utter a prayer to him and ask him to answer us according to his will he definitely will do that because he has our best interests at heart join me again for chapter 4 next week so that we go through this book together and i pray that god may bless you he may keep you as you go through this week and may he shine his face upon all of you until next time i have been your reader for today jane Mwena. but before we go let us bow down for a word of prayer our father what in heaven our prayer this day is that you may increase our faith and help us know that every time we call unto you, you hear us and you answer us according to your will. And so today, as we lift our voices to you in prayer, whatever our heart's desires are, whatever burdens we carry, whatever things that we needed to air out to you, Lord, you know them. You can read our hearts. You can read our minds. We pray that you may answer us according to your will and help us so that we may continue trusting in you and draw more people close to you forgive us our sins lord but most of all prepares for your soon coming kingdom in jesus name i pray amen okay.